So what are the odds that AJ doesn't play against Tampa? Plus, injury updates on Smitty and Jalen, yet the Bucks have their own issues. Fletcher Cox is pissed off after hearing what Javon Hargrave had to say, and Lane Johnson has a demand for Sirianni in the offense. So let's talk about it. But first, let's run it. What's up, guys? Okay, first off, I've got to thank everyone who subscribed and supported so far because we just surpassed 40,000 subscribers in 10 months. So let's do a giveaway. All you got to do is hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed, and comment, Go Birds! And if the Eagles end up hosting a playoff game, I'll draw for someone to win two tickets to the game. We'd have more luck playing pickup sticks with our butt cheeks. Okay, you're right. Even though I expect the Rams to upset Detroit, it's probably less likely that we get two upsets for Philly to host a game. And I mean, we do have to win first also. But let's get to practice because despite it normally being a walkthrough day, Sirianni got the message from Javon Hargrave and said, sorry fellas, we're moving it outside, citing the need to sure up tackling along with the blitz pickup as well as just other basic fundamentals. Like we definitely need the work there. But I think most of us are with Gary who said, oh good, still early enough in the season to fix the fundamental underlying issues plaguing this team that were evident from week one. And sure, but I guess I might take it a little personal having heard this from one of my ex-players. But I can say it's like extremely hard of like practices like even like uh here it's more yeah here yeah, yeah, yeah. very more demanding yeah uh, we, we i think it's like i think it's like more so like um how people call like the golden state coach in the miami heat yeah. over here is the miami heat over there is the golden state because yeah. it's more chill more relaxed you know you just, you chilling over here? Nah, it's work. Who knows? Maybe the guys can take that for some extra motivation. Either way, Fletch made sure to fire back at the grave. Yeah, we practiced today, Hargrave, by the way. You say we don't practice, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we practiced today. So uh, we always practice around here. We practice hard when we do practice. Um, the guys do a really good job. Coach do a really good job of, uh, you know, taking care of us. Um, you know, we all know it's a long season, but, you know, we had some time off. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, coach probably want to get get guys, you know, back running around, getting their hands together. Um, hands right. Me, myself, you know, I don't mind it. Um, good physical practice. So it'll be short, but um, I'm sure we need it. You know, I'm happy to hear that. And I'd love to say this will be the catalyst to jumpstart and get them in playoff mode. But I'm with my dude Connor in uh, how about we take this pissed off energy to the game for once? To which it sounds like Fletch would say, just wait. And you can feel the intensity. Um, you know, everybody, the, the sense of urgency around the building um, is it's up. You know, obviously, um, it's the postseason. So, you know, uh, everybody's sense of urgency is up. Um, players, coaches, we know we just got to keep on, um, keep on, keep on. And, and uh, why not us? You can just tell the, the, uh, the sense of urgency around the building. Like I just spoke about, um, the sense of urgency in the meetings, you know, guys are just honed in. And, you know, we talked about, you know, the usher instincts, you know, when a playoff comes around, those are things. And, and that means a lot. Coach White said that this morning he might be mad at me that I said this, but I appreciate his message this morning uh, when he opened the meetings up um, for the defense. And uh, I think that's that little spark in, in, in a few guys. I want to believe it, but how many times are we going to fall for it? Fool me once, strike one. But fool me twice, Strike three. Okay, seriously though, are you buying it or what do the birds need to do to restore any kind of legitimate faith in the squad? Like for me, it starts with a dominating win versus Tampa, obviously. But that could be a little more difficult since Reed Blankenship was a DNP with a groin injury and Sidney Brown is also obviously out for the season with the ACL and AJ Brown was another DNP. Of course, the good news is that Smitty was a full participant and gave a for sure update that he's playing after practice. However, shout out to Philly Mike who said he has a source who texted him Swole Batman is officially out Monday and ain't playing. So yeah, don't like that. Plus, when you add it to the fact that Jalen Hurts is only able to get in a limited practice while admitting it's been hard to do much with a football, it's fair to be just a bit concerned. Although I guess Jalen did offer at least a silver lining. Obviously, uh, leaving that game um, and attempting to go back in that game probably wasn't physically the best idea. Um, not having much control over the things that I wanted to do, but uh, time, time will tell with that. And I can assure you everything's progressing in the right way. Well, hopefully that continues. But Jalen was seen wearing a glove, so curious to see if he keeps that up and how effective he'll be Monday night. But speaking of a glove, I think it's fair to say Sirianni's on the hot seat. And if he were to get fired, Nick Wright believes Bill Belichick is the perfect fit in Philadelphia. If they lose to Tampa and they fire him, isn't that the perfect spot for Belichick? You have yeah. all that talent on defense. The offensive skill position guys are there. They're and, already there. And your weakness is drafting Howie Roseman's an expert at it. Exactly right. And it's like, hey, the offense is in place. The defense has all this blue chip talent up front. 
And Belichick's been getting the most out of secondary players and linebackers for 20 years. Cold weather, Northeastern City with a blue chip franchise, chance to break Shula's record, chance to get to the Super Bowl. That to me is a hand in glove fit that I would strongly consider if I were all parties. All right, curious to know where you guys are at with this. Like me personally, I don't just love the idea because my preference would be finding an offensive-minded coach who can shake up the game plan and finally add some gas to the play calling. Plus, let's go with this hypothetical of Belichick coming to Philly for a sec. Who do you think he's going to bring in as an offensive coordinator? Like a Josh McDaniels or a Bill O'Brien, and I'm not entirely sure I want Jalen getting groomed by those dudes. Now, where I will tell you I want Bill coming in is as a consultant. Seriously, why not see if he'd come in in that capacity during the postseason? Because for starters, I honestly believe that's the only thing that would fix the Eagles' defense. I mean, sure, for six seasons as DC, Patricia had a top 10 defense, but not really. Come on, we all know Belichick was the mastermind there, especially considering the terrible tape Patricia's put on without the help of one of the GOATs. You are the master. Okay, even then, it may not make a difference at that point, but I'm just saying it can't possibly hurt. But y'all let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, yeah, hopefully we see a difference with Sirianni reminding the defense to be physical and violent on Monday. As BG even believes, a switch has been flipped, and the D is going to remember what they did in week three to prove a point. I'm almost starting to believe we're going to see a different team, which is what it sounds like Brian Johnson will be doing next week after it was reported that now the Tennessee Titans also want to interview BJ for their head coach position. But I'm with the vast majority of you guys in the comments. I know the Rooney rule and just checking the boxes has been the speculation, yet the interest in Brian has been picking up, so I guess there's a very small chance he lands one of those jobs, which would be phenomenal, you know, for his career and all, but also if BJ got the job, that would mean that Philly would get a pair of third-round compensatory picks via that same Rooney rule. And the thing that I laugh about is wouldn't it be so like Howie Roseman to continue taking advantage of Tennessee by calling him up and saying you're gonna hire BJ you asking if you can blackmail me well I guess technically Kevin Byard hasn't turned out to be the still that we thought it'd be and he may very well be looking for another team next season however I can only assume that Sirianni was trying to boost BJ at his last presser in first and second down what do you really look at in first and second down you look at yardage and you look at points we're in the top 10 of both of those for the second year in a row uh, you look at third down uh, I think we're number three and third down. You look at red zone, we're in the top 10 of red zone. So those are more really important uh, statistical categories that you look at a lot to kind of, you know, think about like if your numbers sometimes are what you, what they say, what they say you are, you know? And so we know we're, we know we're a top 10 offense. We know we we have the people in this building to, to be that. And again, like I said, we got to just get back to playing like it, like we have for the uh, most part of the year. Well, go ahead and mark your bingo card on things Sirianni says that are not true, because I think it's blatantly obvious where the offense has been at. Like if I was playing defense against the Eagles, then I would just be calling their plays out. Like, there's, like, honestly, I, I, I know guys at the bar in South Philly that are calling the same plays out. Like, they're just very predictable. That's one. And then, like, look, they played Wink Martindale last week against the Giants. All Wink does is pressure you. Like, he was pressuring Aaron Rodgers in preseason when the Jets, you know, played the Giants. So, and they acted like they weren't prepared for it because they had no, like, when they came after him, Isaiah Simmons coming free, like, they had no answer. Like, what's your answer? What should Jalen Hurts do if they've got a free hitter coming out? Is there a hot read? Is there a sight adjust? Is somebody cutting the route off? Like, their answer is Jalen getting out of the pocket and scrambling and running, which was a disaster last week. Not, they didn't make one good play down the field. And so they look, un, like, underwhelming and underprepared for what these teams are going to do to them. Yeah, Baldy hits the nail on the head. I mean, come on, the last time we played Tampa in week three, we were dominant. So you got to get the ground game going, and that's exactly the demand Lane Johnson has for the offense ahead of Monday night. I waited for Lane Johnson as he came out of the locker room. I've known him a long time. And I said, Lane, how do you fix this? I didn't say what went wrong. I didn't say anything about the past. I said, how do you fix this? What do you do? And he basically said to me, you're looking at him. He said, we got to lean on our strength. We got to lean on our offensive line. We got to go back to what we can do as a running football team, a team that runs the football. And he said, plays play action off of it. It's a simple formula. It's the formula that allowed them to beat the Bucks in September on Monday night, 25 to 11, when they had 40 carries. DeAndre Swift, Kenneth Gainwell, and Jalen Hurts. They need to run the football in this game. 
more than ever. Yes, you absolutely do. Obviously, because of the injury to Jalen and probably not being able to throw as effectively, but also given the fact that Hurts has a 66.3 passer rating against the Blitz. And the Bucks are definitely going to come after him, considering the fact that Jalen versus the Blitz in week three was 13 for 23, 152 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions with a 40.5 rating, which was, uh, by the way, the lowest passer rating against the Blitz this season until week 18. So like I've said before, maybe the injury to Jalen works in our favor. Although I should point out that we're not the only one with a quarterback injury as Baker Mayfield didn't practice with rib and ankle injuries, but is still expected to play even though he may not be at 100%. All right, still no baby. So the live stream watch party is still on for now if you guys want to come hang out on Monday. But go ahead and let me know what the biggest key is for the Eagles to come away with a win against Tampa. I'll start. Run the ball. This has been the Philly Special.